Hello, my name is Naseem Naqvi and I am the editor-in-chief of the Journal of the British Blockchain Association. The JBBA is a scientific peer-reviewed academic journal devoted to blockchain distributed ledger technologies and cryptocurrencies. One of the questions um, I get asked quite frequently is how to go about publishing my work. So I have just finished working on my paper and I think it is ready. So how to get it right the first time when I am submitting my work to the journal. So what I thought I should do today is give you a quick overview of um, what is involved in the publication process, some of the key steps, and some common pitfalls and how to avoid them, how to improve the chances of acceptance of your paper, the role of editors, role of reviewers, and some other important considerations when you are submitting your work. So, first of all, why publish <clears throat> in an academic journal? So why not just post your article on Medium or some blog post? Why, why bother publishing in a scientific journal? So you may have seen this before. Uh, the decisions that we make, whether they are in a uh, in a business or whether we are an organization or a government, any decisions that we make are based on or should be based on evidence. And not all evidence is the same. Um, there are some good quality evidence and there are some weak evidences. So if you look at this chart, the key difference is peer review. So the higher up you go, the more robust it becomes in terms of um, scientific rigor and review. So right at the bottom, there is no to very minimal review. In a magazine or in a blog post, you can pretty much write anything. There is no quality control filter to check if the author has made any over-exaggerated claims or if there are any inaccuracies. And the further up you go, it becomes more and more stringent because now it gets reviewed by independent experts in the field. And so this is really the benchmark um, in most scientific disciplines and blockchain or uh, distributed ledgers are no different. So it's really the bedrock of scientific um, evidence. So your work uh, is, is, is assessed and evaluated by scholars and examined for <clears throat> accuracy, integrity, 
in some cases validity of the information that you have provided in the paper. So it kind of gives you um, an authority of approval that the work is recognized as robust, relatively free of bias. You can't always completely eliminate bias, but relatively free of bias by experts in the field. And then obviously peer review also checks for uh, other things uh, such as novelty. Uh, is this work been done before? Um, or is this really novel and unique as claimed by the author? So reviewers also ensure that there are no over-exaggerated claims. Uh, methodology is, is, is correct. And really the basic is stuff like conflict of interest declared and references cited in the uh, 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 as, as accurately and correctly and so on. <clears throat> so you have written an article and you have uh, you have now decided to uh, publish it. Which journal? Um, few things you should look at when um, you have made a decision to submit it to a journal. Open access is an important factor. Uh, open access means that the content is available immediately and freely to anyone anywhere in the world. So anyone who has internet access can immediately read and download your article um, as soon as it is published. Indexing is important. It means that your um, the article, once it's published, gets indexed and abstracted in all the right places. Um, for example, Google Scholar is one indexing platform. Um, who is reading the articles published in the journal? So, uh, if it's uh, if the readership is broad, global, then you want as many people to have access to and also to read your articles. Uh, you want people to cite your work, reference your work. Good idea to look at the editorial board, <clears throat> who is on the board. What are their expertise? Are they well known and experts in their field? And also who has published the work in the journal? Who are the authors? <clears throat> so always a good idea to look at some of the work that's been published by the journal. So why publish in the JBBA? So this is the JBBA homepage. Website is jbba.scholastica.hq.com. So JBBA is fully open access. There is no fee to read or download articles published in the journal. There is no subscription to read the articles online. So as soon as the article is published, it's available to anyone anywhere in the world immediately. It's a peer reviewed journal. So all research articles are peer reviewed. The Articles are indexed uh, in Google Scholar. Each article receives a unique digital object identifier. Um, the journal is now read in over 150 countries and territories. And it is the world's first journal 
blockchain journal which is available both in print and online. Editorial and review board spans more than 30 countries and the authors that have published their work uh, are from very prestigious and reputable international institutions such as University College London, European Commission, University of Manchester, University of Chicago, etc. We have published two editions uh, and these are the print versions and journal has worldwide distribution. These are some of the <coughs> research articles that we have published in the journal. Uh, and I would advise if you are doing a research or planning to do a research, for example, on supply chains and blockchains, then have a look and read some of the supply chain and blockchain research articles that we have published. For example, this one uh, from Darcy Allen, Alistair Bird, and Brendan Markey Towler. Um, and we publish really very broad. Uh, the scope is quite broad. So, <coughs> excuse me, all things related to blockchain and distributed ledgers from quantum computing to security token offerings to crypto economics. So, <coughs> you have decided to submit your paper to the JBBA. What are the steps? So, few things you have to consider before you plan to submit your work in the journal. What happens at submission, post submission, and the next steps. So, before you submit your work to the journal, it's very, very important to check the aims and scope of the journal. Um, this information is usually available on the journal website. It should be available. So you have to make sure that you are sending your paper to the right journal and the journal accepts uh, those uh, topics. Always advisable to speak to all co-authors, supervisors, professors, mentors, uh, to discuss with them, to show them your paper, make sure it's absolutely ready in the best possible shape and also to make sure that your none of your co-authors has actually submitted the work elsewhere because it would look a bit embarrassing if you submit to a journal to realize a few days later that your colleague has already submitted the paper elsewhere. Um, check the word count. So for JBBA, it's uh, 5,000 words, excluding references. And very important to cite the references in correct style, correct format. Every journal has different um, guidelines uh, for the JBBA. We have IEEE, which is very easy. Um, and you don't actually even have to write the references manually if you just want to cite uh, an article, uh, there are so many different free softwares and websites available. There are a couple of them here. They will cite the reference in the correct IEEE format for you. So the 
aims and scope of the JBB is quite broad, as I said before, uh, blockchain in economics, law, tokenomics, supply chain, uh, Bitcoin security, consensus mechanisms, etc. This information is available on the website in the uh, about about section of the journal. So, what should your paper look like when it's um, when you're writing the paper or when you're just about to um, conclude your work? So, this is the minimum. Uh, standard so all papers should include uh, obviously a title and abstract then introduction to your your research which methods you used what are the results and then discuss those results and then conclude your paper by summarizing and uh, suggesting future uh, research if uh, uh, if that's what the paper is about. So here is an example of how to um, cite the references correctly in IEEE format, which is the referencing format that we use for the JBBA. So it's a very simple and numerical order, one, two, and three in brackets. And in the reference list, they should appear like this. So the first initial of the author followed by their last name and then the article uh, title. So this is one of the research we have published recently on <clears throat> post-quantum distributed ledger cryptography. This is uh, what a final finished version of a paper looks like. So there is a title, details of the author, their institution. Um, and in the left hand column, you see any acknowledgements, contributions, eth ethical approval if applicable, competing interests, etc. And then in the body of the paper, you have ab an abstract introduction, uh, conclusion, references in the end. So what happens at submission? So you submit your uh, paper. Let's say you have decided to submit your work to the JBBA. So it is received in the editorial office. And then the managing editor does some, uh, performs some initial checks. And there, there are three main checks that are performed at this stage by the managing editor. And if there are any issues or any concerns at this stage, uh, then your article will be uh, uh, most likely to be rejected. So what are the three most important checks? Well, the first one is is initial suitability. So if you, if you send an article to the JBBA discussing sports injuries in, 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 in Africa, then with, with no mention of blockchain or distributed ledgers or no relevance to um, blockchain or distributed ledgers or, or cryptocurrencies, then it's going to be rejected. Uh, so always make sure you check the aims and scope of the journal. Second is uh, plagiarism. So plagiarism check are performed uh, very early on and <clears throat> your article is going to be rejected if there is any evidence of plagiarism or fraud. 
And the, the, the third one is completeness of your uh, article. So we have to make sure that uh, your article is, is complete. It includes uh, a title, an abstract, references, and so on. So once uh, the managing editor is happy that uh, your article is uh, suitable for the journal and it's, it looks okay, it looks complete, then your paper will be sent to the handling editor. And the handling editor is usually uh, an assistant uh, editor in chief, sometimes an associate editor in chief, sometimes editor in chief. Um, and their role really is to then invite reviewers. Um, and for the JBBA, we have uh, a big pool of reviewers and uh, the handling editor <coughs> invites reviewers who are from that specialty, making sure that those reviewers uh, have, uh, are from an area where uh, they have the necessary expertise to review the paper. And once uh, your paper has been reviewed, uh, there are three uh, possibilities. Your paper is accepted or it's rejected or the reviewers have advised a revision uh, and then resubmission. So let's just um, quickly talk about uh, reasons for immediate rejection. So why would your paper be immediately rejected? Well, the first, as I said before, is the paper is out of scope. It doesn't uh, uh, conform to the scope of the journal. Plagiarism, if detected at any point, it's immediately uh, a cause for rejection. Your paper is not novel. And what that means is uh, some reviewers are looking for novelty, which means that they want uh, a new idea, a new research to be discussed and presented and published. So if you have done a research that has been published uh, already 15 times before in the past on the same topic, exactly the same idea, same issue, then sometimes um, uh, reviewers uh, won't uh, accept that paper because it's already been done many times before. It doesn't add anything new to the body of science. So even if it's a perfectly good article, um, they might still uh, reject it. <clears throat> Another important uh, reason for immediate reject rejection is if it's written in a very, very poor uh, English, very poor structure, poor format. So we tend to, although focus more on the quality of the paper than the, the, the text, the, the format, um, if it is extremely poorly written, then it is going to be rejected uh, because editors, they don't want to bother reviewers with uh, really rubbish articles. Um, reviewers are very busy people, editors are very busy. There is no point, it's a waste of everybody's time. Um, if you have submitted your work elsewhere, um, then uh, obviously it's going to be rejected. Um, we only accept papers in the JBBA which have not been submitted elsewhere. And obviously look at the other guidelines um, for submission. So review process, what's, what happens at this stage? So you are one of the lucky ones. Your article has not been rejected by the managing editor or the handling editor and it has gone to uh, the review stage. So 
so we have pool of reviewers and um, the review process is double blind so what what do we mean by that so the we omit all uh, author identifiable information and institution identifiable information in fact the template that is available for authors to use is specifically uh, uh, mentions uh, to the authors to not include any identifiable information in the title or name or institution and uh, managing editor also make sure that that information if it is uh, inserted in the article by mistake then it is uh, removed before the article goes to the reviewers um, review process can take time uh, reviewers are busy people uh, they are frequently late um, so it often takes several back and forth email reminders to them asking them to complete reviews in time uh, so it's, uh, uh, it's it's very variable and so the so your paper has um, undergone review now there are really only three outcomes your paper is accepted which is very rare um, it is uh, rejected or it is for revision so why would your paper be rejected well if your methodology is flawed if it is extremely poorly written um, your purpose of research and conclusions don't make any sense um then it's going to be uh, rejected so you have to make sure that you use uh, right method you analyze the results correctly and the conclusions that you have drawn from your research are sensible uh, and they make sense and the third uh, so it it could be revised and submit and the revision could be major, minor. Um, it depends upon um, how much work is required. I would also advise that um, you make sure that your paper has a very clear message. It's not just a piece of information. There is a very clear message and even if you don't know the answer to all the questions in fact most of the time we don't know we don't have the answers to all questions that's why we are doing the research in the first place um, so you signpost the readers in some future direction for future research suggest some ideas some hypothesis some future roadmap on okay this is the research that i have done however there is more work that needs to be done and this is what we propose etc so so how to get your paper uh, accepted uh, in the um, in the first place <coughs> read the instructions for uh, authors guidelines uh, very carefully you must make sure that your article is in the best possible shape and when i say best possible means you you really have to spend some time making sure that it's it's free of errors as much as possible you have consulted all authors your supervisors your professors anyone who is involved in the writing of manuscript make sure they all read it very carefully 
Um, by all means, sell your idea, your research, but don't oversell it. You want uh, the paper to speak for itself, but you don't want to really oversell it, uh, your research. You don't want to be making any overblown claims and so on. So by all means, get excited about your, your research, but don't, over it, don't oversell it. It should speak for itself. And don't repeat the same thing again and again in your article. So write very concisely and avoid repetition and make sure your references are in the correct format. So that's really the key summary of uh, how to write and publish your paper. 